Yusuf Maori is a Yemeni journalist. He's also CEO of Tell Your Tale Productions. He joins us from the American city of Detroit. Yusuf, thank you so much for your time. Do the Houthis have the capability of launching these kind of strikes with these kind of drones against Saudi Arabia? The Houthis have presented uh, footage, videos in the past, which uh, shows them basically carrying out uh, cruise missile attacks, ballistic missile from unknown locations in Yemen. Um, they've showed footage of Ansar Allah fighters at the scene launching uh, uh, unmanned drones. So, yes, to answer your question, I, I do think the Houthis, Ansar Allah, are fully capable of carrying out such attacks, uh, especially since they have done so in the past. They've targeted uh, military sites in Jaizan. They've targeted uh, air in the province of, uh, of Najran, and the Houthi leader has warned over and over again that in the future, on Saudi law, the Houthis will target uh, Saudi Arabia's most sensitive economic resource. And that's some something that we've seen unfold uh, this past Saturday. And the Yemeni army or on the, the army backed by the Houthis is warning to carry out more attacks similar to the one that we saw on Saturday. So to answer your question again, yes, I do think they're capable of carrying out such attacks. And I do think we will see more attacks in the future if this war or this blockade doesn't end soon. Well, the motivation for the Houthis to attack Saudi Arabia is quite clear because the Saudi-led coalition has killed so many people since it ended, entered Yemen's war. How much more complicated is the situation in Yemen now that the United Arab Emirates is not completely on the same page as Riyadh? Does that make it so much more complicated? You know... Yemeni politics is, is always complicated. Every event in Yemen, is, you know, it consists of, uh, you know, the part where Saudi Arabia has a specific interest that it wants to gain in Yemen. The UAE has specific interests that it wants secure in Yemen. And the only regime or entity that can meet uh, the interests or secure the interests of Saudi Arabia and the UAE is uh, the government of Abdurrahman Mansur Hadi, which is of course, uh, stationed in Saudi Arabia. Because the Houthis are in power right now or because they're in control of the north, the UAE and the Saudi Arabia, they don't have anybody they can uh, negotiate with to secure their interests because the Houthis have, have declared from day one that uh, you know the government that will be formed in Yemen will be an independent, sovereign government that will cater to the needs of the Yemeni people. So this is something, you know, Saudi Arabia is used to doing business in Yemen, uh, and some would even say exploiting Yemen's resources. Uh, and this is something that the Hadi government has allowed Saudi Arabia to do for the time that it was in power. So there's definitely a power struggle, but the UAE and Saudi Arabia, they Although there is some differences, they do want to see the Houthis uh, withdraw from the Yemeni capital. They do uh, want to restore the Hadi regime back into power. Uh, so if they're not able to do that in the north of the country, you can expect Saudi Arabia and the UAE to uh, finance and embolden the southern movement in the south of the country, because okay. that's the only... Yusuf, sorry, we're running out of time. I totally appreciate it. And the point is, surely the most important point there is that the UAE's proxies are now fighting against the Yemeni National Army. It is so complicated. But let me just broaden it out, because I wanted to get your take on the fact that this is now bigger than Yemen, with the Houthis attacking Saudi Arabia and the Americans threatening to attack whoever may be responsible for those drone attacks on the oil facilities. What will it do to the Middle East if the Americans attack Iran? Well, it would essentially lead to a, a regional conflict or a regional war. I don't, however, think that, Saudi, that the U.S. will attack Iran. I think, if anything, it will just lead to more sanctions on Tehran. Um, I think uh, if, if, if there really needs to be hard, concrete evidence to prove that Iran is the one who's responsible for directly attacking Saudi Arabia's oil facilities, and unless that evidence is prevented, I don't think the, uh, the uh, United Council would sanction such a war to take place or a conflict to take place between the U.S. and Iran. There's too much uh, uh, at stake with a war with Iran. So I think the U.S. will be very cautious in, in proceeding 
in such a conflict. Um, so if anything, it'll just lead perhaps to more sanctions on Iran. And again, there has to be decisive evidence to prove that Iran was directly responsible for this. But as we have heard, even though uh, there, there hasn't been any evidence present yet, Saudi Arabia and the U.S. Accu they're basically saying that the Houthis are Iranian proxy and that the you know ed everything that the Houthis do is an extension of what Iran mm -hmm. wants in the region. Okay, Yusuf, thank you so much indeed for joining us on the News Hour on TRT World. Yusuf Maori speaking to us from Detroit.